Hello Nigeria, hello Africa. You're watching Plus TV Africa and the program is Sports Business with Oru for Ezaga. A lot of sports we're going to be talking about today, but principally, as you know, with this program, we focus on the business side of things. Sports is big entertainment, but then sports is big business as well. Today we have a bumper package for you. We're going to be talking about tennis in Nigeria and all we need to do to return Nigerian tennis to the heights of the 70s to 90s when giants like Unduka Odizo, David Imonitie, Tony Umor, Sadiq Abubakar and, and the like were ruling um, Nigerian tennis and featuring regularly on the world stage. Today, joining us for this program will be the president of the Nigerian Tennis Federation, Mr. Dayo Akindoju, and Mr. Professor Sadiq Abubakar, uh, who's an adjunct professor at the Florida International University uh, at the United States of America. Both of them will be uh, trying to dissect with me uh, the, the, the tennis industry in Nigeria, what is happening as in the current status and what needs to be done to uh, further progress the sport in Nigeria. Nobody is, is in a better position to do so than um, the, the two guests that we have on the program today. Before we get started, um, I'm going to give you a short break, about a minute or so, to you know, get prepared for what you're going to hear over the next 45 minutes. When we return, the business begins. You're welcome back to Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. Today, I'm flying solo in the studio, but we have two great guests that are going to be joining us via Zoom. The president of the Nigerian Tennis Federation joins from Abuja and the uh, ex-Nigerian international professor Sadiq Abubakar joins from the United States. Hello, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Nigerians, and uh, can be to uh, uh, be here to talk about tennis in Nigeria. Uh, President, I think a good place to start is what the status of tennis um, in Nigeria um is today you know uh, what ha what would you say is the is the status of tennis in nigeria are we making progress um where is the support coming from do we need support you know um, are we looking at the government are we looking at the private sector please give us your opinion uh, okay thank you for this uh, big opportunity um tennis in nigeria has been um climbing uh, positively, but uh, at a very slow pace. Uh, what, what has happened in tennis over the years uh, uh, is a slow, very slow growth in all the major departments of tennis that, uh, that uh, has happened, uh, facilities, players, uh, officiating, coaching, those four careers, growth has been very slow. But um, e even as slow as it is, we, we have had uh, some progress in at least ensuring that uh, the, the game is, uh, the players are better engaged and the uh, facilities are improved. Uh, but the summary is that the, 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 the pace of uh, development has been extremely slow. And one of the major reasons is that there is no uh, proper, structured, funded um, program uh, that uh, the federations can run easily. So what uh, what we do is to uh, climb around the uh, relationships with uh, a few corporate organizations and few individuals. Uh, sadly, of course, government will hear funding even on their part is uh, difficult. So. I've been president for seven years. Uh, I can be quoted that uh, I've not received, or uh, my federation has not received uh, uh, a dime from uh, my supervisor ministry. So, uh, seven years. We've been doing all, all we have been doing 
purely based on um, relationships with some few corporate organizations and uh, and uh, individuals. Okay, Mr. President, you say in seven years you have not received a dime from the government. Is that is that? Did I hear you correctly? Perfectly. You know, you know, you know. I'm trying to repeat that and basically amplify it. Is the fact that you know out on the streets, people think that you guys in the federations uh, collect all of these monies from government and you misappropriate them. Uh, you know, so I think it's a bit of a surprise that you're saying money has not come in, and I think it, it's worth uh, you know echoing the, um, yeah. the sort of challenges yeah. you guys then face as a result. You, you heard me very clearly. You heard me very right. Uh, mm. I want to repeat it. I mean, President, since uh, July uh, 2017 to date, uh, I have not received uh, my federation. To the best of my knowledge, of course, we have only one account, is a TSA account, mm. and um, funds that comes there, it's almost open to uh, the secretary and the treasurer of the federation, and uh, we have not. We have made several attempts uh, to um, request for funds. Uh, sometimes we are asked to uh, make uh, budgets and so on. We do them regularly, but like I said, and I'm repeating, as the president of the Nigerian Tennis Federation for the past seven years, we as a board have not received any form of uh, financial support from. Uh, that's so even when you play the Davis Cup matches and you have to travel out of this country, you fund that yourself? Absolutely. Uh, but sometimes we get support from our, our international um, body. Uh, the body we are affiliated to the ITF. You okay. know. So even the one we hosted recently, uh, we got what we call the hosting grant, okay. which is normally given to every um, um, host nation that is hosting any of the international uh, tournaments that the ITF is uh, hosting. So yes, we got this time thirty-five, thirty-four thousand okay. dollars, and of course we had to look for a lot of much more money to ensure that. Uh, we, we we hosted and thankfully won, uh, got promoted. So uh, funds came from individuals and a few corporate organizations that supported us, and uh, that's how we were able to um, host the tournament. And that's how we we have been uh, surviving. That's how generally uh, as a federation. We have been surviving. Again, I said I can report it. Um, these things are verifiable. Uh, out on the street is, uh, is news that are unverified. You know, every year, personally, I don't want to brag about it, uh, but I put lots of my personal funds into supporting. Uh, there's no year minimum, maybe 50 million, sometimes 70, 80 million. That personally from my uh, businesses that I put together to support uh, the games, of course, because of uh, the passion, uh, the tournaments we run yearly and, and so on. So uh, there are three, four major supporters um, in the areas of uh, uh, running some basic programs, uh, tournament majorly, the central bank, uh, uh, for the past 46 years, I've been running uh, a yearly tournament. So the last time, uh, the cost of the whole tournament was 30 million. And before then, it was like 20 million uh, yearly, and that's what we get. These are all verifiable, and uh, of course, we have uh, rain oil, um, we have uh, the Dalai Hat Court, and a lot of the other ones are. Uh, like Dav Notch, uh, sponsored by a company called Dav Notch, I don't want to mention the name of the principal. But uh, this is how we we have uh, done uh, uh, whatever we have done so far. But And then there are lots of private uh, groups, like the, I would say one of the few academies we have. Not my idea of what an academy should be, but I mean, we are running 
as an academy, Oron Academy is out there doing a lot of support in the area of uh, players. I mean, they take seats or there about now maybe about ten players. They support them and uh, they, they they ensure that they they are on. But these are all individual and uh, private uh, initiatives. Things that are yeah. initiatives that are ongoing. So that's how we've been uh, we've been uh, we've been uh, surviving, and uh, that's it. Okay, let me bring in Prof at this point. You know, um, Prof, you've had the president. Yes, sir. You've had the president. Uh, and, you know, you live in a different environment. You live in the United States and you've had, you've lived there a long time. What I want to understand is, you know, what is a federation supposed to do to, to, for a sport in a country like Nigeria? You know, uh, and how do you, how do you, how do you grow the, gra the game, say, for instance, in the United States? Well, um, it, it, it is sad to hear my president, uh, you know, go back and you know uh, to share the challenges, you know, that uh, he and, and his board uh, are going through to develop uh, tennis. It is true. Uh, I can confirm uh, what he has uh, said because I've uh, I'm always involved. You know, at the national level with some of the ministers and with this conversation and I ask them why and I never get a, a definitive uh, a response from them. Now, uh, because we have two different clients, uh, America or the industrialized world mm. uh, function differently, approach sports differently, um, uh, uh, especially America. Right, Nigeria and Africa, we approach sport uh, development, you know, with a different mentality and the culture different. So we have to go into specifics, uh, you know, to really have a, a fully understanding uh, of how these other nations prepare their athletes. Right, uh, we have to look at uh, at the micro macro level, and then of course at the micro level. You know, discussion to understand. You know, but I'm happy to hear. Uh, you know, my president. Uh, we had a nice conversation last year about this time for about 20 minutes, and um, and then I appreciate uh, the honesty. And uh, for the first time, I'm hearing specifics. Uh, you know, so this is encouraging. You know, and uh, and uh, thank you for bringing us together. This is the first time in seven years that uh, a media uh, in a organization you know has brought us together so this is very very good okay so uh, mr president yes sir wh what does the nigerian government first should the gov should it be the government's responsibility to fund federations for instance that's number one. And okay. number, and number right. two, if it is their responsibility, what do they expect from you? All right. There are two ways to answer that question. Mm. Um, ideally, like it happens in other times, uh, uh, even in Africa, even in Africa, I can take Morocco as an example. Yeah, Morocco as an example. You know, uh, last year I became one of the vice presidents of CAP. So we were at uh, uh, our inaugural meeting in Tunis this year, and um, um, the vice president in charge of the North, who is from uh, Morocco, was uh, chatting with me, and he said that he's not getting support from his government at all. And I said, what do you mean? Uh, the government does not say, no. I so they are giving him only 3.5 million euros in a year, what can he do with that? And, you know, I was uh, uh, majorly embarrassed, you know, because <laughs> 3.5 million euro and you're complaining, I don't get one dime. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, these are conversations we had. So, yes, ideally, uh, there are two ways again I want to answer, I want to answer that question. When things are fully functional, when 
the awareness, the culture, uh, the commitment of all uh, parts of people that are supposed to invo be involved in sports, when they are fully realizable, government does not have to support in terms of financials. Okay. Because, again, I start, culture. If we have a good culture of sports, let me not limit it to tennis alone. If we have a good culture of sports, we, we imbibe from, from age five, age six, that sport is part of our life. And sport is part of our culture, and sport is part is supposed to be part of our expenditure. Yeah. You know, go, yeah, growing up, and then as you grow, you know that you should not go and watch a match free. Yeah. You should pay to watch. So that culture, that culture needs to be uh, created again. I, I can't really say it was fully there even in the time past in the 70s and the 80s uh, yes yeah, so we used to pay a token to go watch some uh, football or some other matches or sports but the culture needs to be, be developed and, and and be imbibed early so when you know that sports uh, is supposed to be part of your life expenditure that you budget to, to ensure that you pay to 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 take part in sporting activities or to 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 watch sporting activities, you know, it becomes part of you. It becomes easy when somebody talks to you about sport. It's 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 a sweet uh, sound to your ear to say, oh, he came to ask me that. I mean, there is a game coming up. Uh, let's go watch. You know, it, it's something that uh, that culture is not there anymore or it's rather very low. So until if that culture is developed and and progress, which will take a long time, the way it is going now, um, because there are several challenges even on the way, yeah. if that culture goes on, it will be easy for you to get sponsorship, yeah. for you to get participation, for you to get everybody to come together, the media, the uh, coaches, the, the officials, everybody will jump at it easily. And so it makes the job easy. But oh, oh, hang on, hang, hang on a moment, President. Uh, uh, Mr. Yeah. President, see, you, that culture that you're speaking about, mm -hmm. right, who creates that culture? There are some people that will say, if you have programs developed by the Federation that are interesting to young people and their parents, maybe from an early age, then hopefully you can develop that culture like you have said from an early age through their lives who creates the culture everybody everybody in the sporting industry mm. everybody from the teachers in the in the in the primary school because it's about interaction who do mm. these kids interact with and then what are they exposed to at that age uh, in 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 uh, Again, I'll go to uh, the other clans where it is working better than Nigeria. You know, you wake up in the morning and you find kids, five, five, it's, it's part of them, but it's part of the kids and their parents. The parents wake them up and ah, look, you have to go out, you have to go to work, you have to go for a walk, you have to go to play tennis, you have to go. So it's a culture that everybody uh, must be involved in and, and generated from uh that childhood but who are the people parents number one number two uh teachers and of course these 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 are people that must have had ideas about sporting again that is where the culture comes in because the parents must even have the culture or know the culture or believe in the culture of sports to be able to impact it on the kids yeah. or the younger ones so that is where it starts from and then as it goes, the government too has a role to play because a lot of these uh, sporting facilities, a majority of them uh, are for, uh, are for, for Nigeria uh, are provided uh, by, by, by the government. So, 
you know, even when you plan cities, you plan Abuja, you plan Lagos, you create areas for recreation where you can, of course, assess such kind of facilities equally for development. So when you wake up in the morning and behind your house, you see a tennis court, you know, growing up. You will, you will be inquisitive. You see people jump there every morning. One day, you as a kid, because you are exposed to seeing that, you will go there, and then of course uh, you will uh, you will get exposed to 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 participation in that in that uh, particular sports or sports generally. So okay. it's everybody. Okay, it's so government. just before I go, just before I go to Prof, yeah, you you meet with government, you meet with the ministers, you meet with uh, maybe the permanent secretaries. What do they expect from you as the president of the well, tennis Federation? Yeah. What they expect, because it is some of these discussions are very difficult, difficult to do uh, with them because you have had several interactions with ministers, with the permanent secretaries. Um, some of the things are okay, uh, we don't have funds, we are waiting for funds, we don't have money, so um. We've made budgets, but uh, it's not financially backed or cash backing. You know, it's not there. So you go back. They expect you to go to the to the to the field and uh, look for sponsors and run your programs. That is what. But they equally expect you to bring athletes that will win uh, Olympic medals and uh, and Grand Slam uh, events. <laughs> That's what they expect. You know, okay. but uh, it's not going to happen that way easily until, like I said, uh, we all come together and uh, ensure that uh, every department of every sport is taken care of. Okay, so Prof, you've heard the president talk about all stakeholders coming together to, to advance tennis in Nigeria. You yourself are involved in a private initiative. You are an ex-international. You played tennis at a very high level and now you're thinking of giving back to society and you are trying to on your own uh, muscle some of the 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 former players um you know to try and do something for tennis in nigeria can you let us know what that is and how much progress you have made let me let me um put clarity in what my president just said mm -hmm. regarding uh you know, building a culture of participation, a culture of involvement, um, a culture of uh, information sharing to develop tennis and tennis uh, sports development in Nigeria. I have been very fortunate uh, since 2009 to interact with government, uh, the ministers, uh, the DG, uh, some permanent secretary. Uh, just recently, I was very involved in writing the 2022 26 i mean 26 national sports industry policy so i know the thinking i know the mentality and i know the challenges facing uh, uh, sports development in nigeria particularly sports so i'm i'm really excited to hear you know from uh, my president that uh, uh, this is what uh, he and his board have been um, facing um, for the last seven years, which of course I know because I've always been involved with my late father in uh, Adejmo, right? And then throughout that period, he may not know a lot of days, but at least he's knowing now, you know, that yes, I have been involved for the last 34 years and I've accepted my role in being critical in the beginning, but uh, I am not anymore now because of course age, and then because of the, uh, the wisdom and then because of the education. Now to come back to your, what he was referring to about, about culture, right? Remember, in these industrialized nations, it is the middle class that uh, sustain sports development. So this is very fundamental. In industrial nations, right? America, Australia, Britain, and all of that, right? Government you know they play a limited role in sports development it's all in the private sector 
right? So if you, if you bring it back to the challenges we're facing right now in Nigeria in terms of the economic challenges and other cultural challenges, you begin to understand, you know, what a lot of these uh, sports uh, presidents, including, um, you know, my president, right, you know, are going through. So I'm very sympathetic to that. Now, coming back to your question of my role in the last 30, uh, 34 years with that shifted, which is expected from being critical, you know, to now, you know, being participatory in my stuff. And I'm glad, honestly, I'm glad that I'm able to, you know, be having this conversation to let Prince, uh, the uh, president know that, look, you know, I mean, he has already told me that last year that, yes, he, he believes in what I'm doing, he supports uh, the vision, but again, there are contradictions in what a federation does and what private uh, individuals or organizations do. I understand this, that distinction, right? I'm still Sadiq Abdullahi. I, I came from uh, from the poor, you know, all of the people that are in the academy that he talked about, right? Their parents cannot even put food on the table. My parents cannot, you know, are struggling to put food on the table. So we know that. So that is the angle that a lot of I'm coming from, and a lot of us that represented Nigeria. Remember, most of us are ball boys, right? You know, mm. so there's no level of arrogance now after you've we've gone through this and become successful. And I think it's the point the Federation has been missing as far as that is concerned, that there's no arrogance in my accomplishment, you know, because my father cannot read and write in English, okay? He was a messenger. To the, to the federal government in Lagos, state house in Nigeria. So all of this information are coming to the to the to the to the um, to the president and the board. You know that yes, in order for us to come together, we must build relationship first. And that is the problem I see. You know, the federation in the past have not really taken the time to build relationship because the perception is that yes, we are either too critical or maybe our approach. And I told the president last year, you know, that yes, you know, there's ignorance on our part, there is this exuberance on our part, and, uh, and we've, we've matured and we can come together. So now, finally, to your, to your point of mobilizing Nigerians, it's a tough, tough job to Thank mobilize you. Nigerians in the diaspora, tough job to mobilize Nigerians in Nigeria, and tough job to mobilize Africans to come in and then buy. But we're making progress. I'm really, really excited that, you know, that the uh, president came out and then spoke the way he, he uh, spoke in, you know, for us now to go back and rethink our approach and then come back, you know, and then now that seven years, you know, going to, is in his eighth year, right? You know, so I'm telling him, you know, what legacy do you want to leave? Forget about, you know, all the perception you've had about Sadiq Abdullah, Yunduko Diesel, and the rest of that, right? You know, so, you know, put that aside. What, what do you want to leave behind, right? You know, uh, working, we're going to be working on the guidelines for the National Sports Federation. You know, if uh, things are going the way I am being, you know, in the conversation I'm having, to, to look at the new guidelines that we, and then the plan, that will allow, you know, uh, government to respond to what he just said. You know, so for me, I'm in touch with uh, the minister himself, the current minister, right? You know, we've spoken two or three times, and, uh, you know, and hopefully those things that he mentioned can be addressed appropriately, bringing them together. I, I'm involved, like I said, I know what the problems are, I know what the solutions are, right? but I cannot do it alone. Right, you, you you have to trust me. I have to trust you. And if there are benefits, let us share those benefits. You know, and I like one thing again before I, uh, you know, I, I, I stop. Right, you know, he gave us specifics about what he, the grant he gets from ITF, right, and then the the inter the politics within the CAF, which I know, I know all of these things because you know a lot of people privately and I ask questions, right. So for that okay. alone my respect to the to the president so this is uh this, this some of this problem can be addressed right if we all come together okay um 
So, President, I'm go what, we're going to go on a short break now. When we come back, we're going to be talking about, you know, the business of tennis. Now the government is not really um, forthcoming with financial assistance, and this game needs to run. I appreciate that today you are a president who, you know, can afford to chip in uh, substantially if, if, when the need arises. But what if tomorrow we have a president who is not financially as strong as you are? As you are? What is he going to do? All right, that's number one. Number two, if the government is not coming up with money, how do we then uh, raise capital for the sport of tennis in such a way that the, the federation can be self-funding and entrepreneurs can make a lot of money out of this? Remember what Professor Sadiq Abubakar said when he said in the developed world, it's the middle class that sustains sports development. If we take that and we add it to your point about culture, if we can grow the culture and add that to middle class interest, uh, sports can thrive in Nigeria and tennis would be one of the top sports um, without, it, without a doubt. So we take a short break now. When we return, we focus on the money. You're welcome back to the program. You're watching Sports Business with Oru4 Izaga, and the, we're reaching you live from Plus TV Africa Studios in Lagos. All right, on the program with me today, we've had the president, or we have the president of the Nigerian Tennis Federation, Mr. Dayo Akindoju, as well as um, former international and adjunct professor of Florida, Florida International University, Professor Sadiq Abubakar. Now, Abdullahi. President. Sorry? Abdullahi. Sorry, Sadiq Abdullahi. <laughs> anyway, yeah. sorry about that. Okay, so to the okay. President, yeah. Uh, yeah. President, you know, you know that um, internationally, many of these tennis co um, tournaments that we see are. Uh, either owned by, uh, you know, private investors or by clubs, you know, um, communal, community clubs or communal clubs, country clubs, you know, um, these guys come together to organize these tournaments, not just as ch charity, but as business, because they make a lot of money from this, uh, from this enterprise. Wimbledon, for instance, is a private club. It organizes Wimbledon, which is the richest Grand Slam in, in, in the world. And they say, based on what I have, I have read, that Wimbledon, the All England and Croquet Club, uh, Croquet Club I think, yeah, that, um, that owns Wimbledon, makes 98% of its revenues every year from the two weeks of Wimbledon. Why are the clubs in Nigeria not taking a leaf from that to organize their own tournaments and then probably make money from this, seeing that most of their members are, are high-ranking members in, in society. Well, again, thank you so much. Again, I'll come back to the thing about culture, mm. culture of sports. You know, that culture that I've, I've been hammering on, uh, it's not just in, um, in um, playing the game. Mm. It's understanding that you should, as a human being living on Earth, um, contribute financially and, and otherwise to anything about sports in your in your country. It's 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 it's, it's a basic thing that if it is not there, then no matter what you do, because I'm coming to approach you to talk to you about um, about tennis. It is easier when you already know that, uh, I mean, tennis exists, number one, tennis is important, and it is my responsibility to support the development of tennis. You have, you have prepared, you, you, you are a prepared vessel that approaching will make, will be easy. And so, um, um, further conversation we all, almost automatically falling. But now, 
a lot of people, of course, we have over 40, 50 uh, different sports in Nigeria. But let me stay with tennis. A lot of people uh, know that tennis exists as a sport. Uh, a couple of people, too, partake in those in tennis purely, a lot, purely for recreation. Uh, but the, the, the well to do, I mean, people that can bring out funds to support the developmental part of the game uh, are generally very, very reluctant for a couple of real reasons. One, uh, I won't want to go the negative. Maybe they have been beaten because, of course, there are several federations. This some federation will go take money. They don't do the what they said they would do, and then when another federation goes to the same person, everybody goes to Dangote, everybody goes to Otedola, everybody. There are few names, you know, among the big set of names, but there are others anyway. So at the club level, even at the club level, we have a lot of people. I, I run the club too in Abuja, Abuja Country Club. We have a lot of people there that can come together easily. But the first question is, is that culture in them? The culture is not just playing. It's, it's in participating in, in the development of the, of the game. Mm. So uh, that part is still very gray. People of, that has that, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not people with money, but people that has uh, that what it takes to give mm. you understand because because they they believe that if you support tennis or if you support sports mm. there is a future for for the kids you are supporting mm. and for the games and entirely they are very few yeah they are very very few so what we have done and what i very much hope very soon uh, i'll get people of like minds with us and uh, a couple of other people is start there's one thing we need to do I, I, I don't know if you remember one conversation we had uh, Ken. Hmm. set up something that will attract everybody to know that oh so this is possible this is possible in mm. Nigeria. A Nigerian can play at the Grand Slam level. Yeah, yeah. Let me give. Let me tell you something. We just hosted uh, the Davis Cup, and uh, for the first time in a long time, we got promoted to to um, to Group Two, World Group Two stage. Mm. You know, which is like the next to the stage uh, World Group One, which is the highest level Nigeria ever uh, got to. Sadiq was part of that team in 1988 or 1989 that they got to World Group 1. You know, if you know the number of calls and people that want to see me, that want to talk to me about tennis, that want to associate with me about tennis, oh, especially like a kid that nobody believed in, you know, became the revelation of the tournament. I'm talking about Michael uh, Ackman. Uh, Emmanuel, you know, and a, lo a couple of the other players. It has brought um, activity and prominence and, of course, uh, engagement on the sports to, to the federations. Mm. And we are taking them one by one, one by one. So there are several approaches. But one approach, which is very, very important, is to do something that will prove that with proper structured and funded uh, program, we can achieve success. Once success is achieved, people will run. That's one thing about Nigeria and, of course, everywhere in the world. Once they see that a Nigerian is doing well, uh, you know, out of any sport, everybody runs to, yeah, yeah. to that person yeah. and, uh, and, of course, that program. Yeah. So uh, uh, I'll go back again to Oron Academy. Oron Academy started two, three years ago and they took three, four, five players that they noticed had potentials, got three, four, five coaches around them, gave them everything, made them play tennis, made them go around the world, participate in in um, ITF junior and then of course now senior tournaments. And then as as that went on, 
a player that was not very well known became and is today the number one player in, in, in Nigeria, which means it's possible when people are groomed uh, uh, with the proper pathway as it is there, you know, with programs, it's possible to achieve, uh, 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 you know, uh, excellence. Okay. So, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's what it is, basically. Do an event, uh, a couple of them, if possible. Uh, and this is where it, it, it doesn't have to be with the Federation. If Sadiq Abdullahi, for example, brings four or five, I, of course, I hear Unduka Odizo is coming, send me an invite to, 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 to Lagos to run a clinic and do some programs. Unduka Odizo has a very good brand, you yeah. know, is the is a Nigerian that, uh, as of today, I think only one other person has come close to his uh, record, reaching uh, um, what's it called the, the fourth round of the Wimbledon, you know, event. He's, he's a brand. He's a brand. But you know, we expect when that kind of brand enters, everybody wants to go and see him. When Serena, Serena Williams came and his uh, and her sister came to Lagos Law. Uh, sometimes ago, everybody I know so many people that flew from Abuja to Lagos to go out. So people run towards um, um, a success story. Okay. So uh, as we as we start to have that thing, pocket of them here and there, and see that oh, with little support or with uh, something happening around somewhere, uh, I mean, good results can come out. We we, we see that culture. Get okay. the love and uh, funding will follow. Okay, fantastic. So, yeah, I understand culture. I understand the fact that um, you know people need to do a bit more, um, especially the people in the tennis community, as you have highlighted. You know, to know that look, if you're playing the game, if you love the game, then you know it makes sense for you to invest what you can to ensure that future generations benefit from you know from what you you leave behind i'm going to go to the prof now and, and ask him you know like the president has identified different stakeholders for instance there's the federation but then he spoke about the clubs uh, he spoke about the academies and then um you know about those three and more for, and so if who who do we turn to um who do we really turn to for guidance? There's, sorry, there's a question I think I should ask the president before before the board. I'm going oh, to ask okay, you. That's no, no, okay. please respond to respond to what I have to say. Then maybe we'll go back to the president. And I'm going to ask you the question. Okay. Maybe the president. Yeah, 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 now the question yeah, is, yeah. who is supposed <laughs> to have a, a a roadmap, a master plan of how? tennis is supposed to get from ground zero to the top and where each stakeholder fits in, right? So that's one question, Prof. Uh, Pres Mr. President, you can answer that as well. We, but, have, uh, we have the Federation has that. that, that <laughs> incidentally, yeah, we have them in multiple platforms. Okay. Uh, there is the biggest one, which is from the ITF. It's drawn. You, uh, you only uh, adjust to suit your own local uh, conditions. Okay. The pathway for development is very clear. Uh, you take a, a typical uh, uh, ITF tennis site, you will see everything about development of tennis in every, in every department. Um, and we have that document. But Again, is, is that document the tailored document, to the is the, that the document, document tailored to the Nigerian realities? Exactly, exactly. The, it is. It is uh, tailored towards that. We have those documents. We have had them. We have re reviewed them. The documents that uh, are not uh, because the document too only gives you guidance okay. of how to run these things, but. If the funding for each part of the thing is not readily available, or you don't have off-takers yeah. to take uh, 
some part of the funding, for example, media, because that's part of, they are part of the program, the developmental program, or physiotherapy, mm. or any of the departments, for example, if you don't have all of takers taking all or some of these things, you find out that uh, you start, this side is working, the other side is not working, and of course you need a full um, uh, robust thing where from the local government to the state government, and of course to the academies, to the clubs, is an all everybody participating to ensure but, that but who, uh, who, who, who is the who is the champion of this is the federation that that of course is the federation it's okay the federation that uh, okay so let's go to that. let's go to prof now uh, because of time yeah. so that i can uh, have his um, say prof you live in a different yeah. country where things work you know i, I imagine as they're supposed to who who what would you suggest based on what you have heard so far, is the way to go in the Nigerian situation. Um, do we forget about government and just totally focus on the private sector? Do we get the clubs on board? That's the communal clubs, the, you know, do we get, you know, what do we do? Well, first of all, you're correct. The full name is Sadiq Abubakar Abdullahi. Right, eight or so. That uh, needs to be. Oh, okay. Okay. I like I like those three to go together right now. Oh, perfect. It, perfect. Yeah, it gives me my professorial uh, distinction before uh, between Terence Fair yes. and the and the academic guy. Okay, listen. Okay. There are three, eight, three, five areas that the uh, the president has gone through. He started with moral aspect, okay. linking to the corporate uh, uh, social responsibility of uh, individuals, corporation getting involved. Right, that's the moral part. Then uh, now we're going into the substantive uh, aspect of our discussion, which focuses on on what technical, strategic, political, and economic aspect of sports business mm -hmm. and particularly tennis business. So let's 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 make sure we put them compartmentalize them well so that we can understand and then bring the pieces back together in order for us to be able to uh, uh, what? to measure what we're doing. Now, let me go back to your question and clarify, right? Now, the International Tennis Federation is the big boss. The president is correct. You know, they, if you go to their website, everything is there. Guide, guide, guidelines and, and guidance uh, uh, are there for all of the partners, all of the countries. Let me go back to your Wimbledon reference, right? The British Long Tennis Association, in partnership with that club, you know, they work together to now uh, you know, the right for Wimbledon, right? The USTA organizes the the uh, <laughs> US Open. the Australian Tennis Federation organizes the Australian Open. The French Open organizes that. So let's let's understand the relationship. It okay. goes back to what he's saying regarding culture, right? There's no argument about that. We must build a sustainable culture in order for us to achieve what we want to want to achieve. So that is number no, number two. Now coming back to Nigeria, you know, he has said everything. I mean, look, these are conceptual discussions. We've had this conceptual, we're talking about, you know, what to do, how to do, and all. We've been saying that for years, you know, so it has come, and I'm like I said, I'm happy. It has come to a point. He got to his, before he became the president, there are what, over 10, 11 other presidents, you know, since 1960s that have been, you know, coming up trying to figure out, you know, what to do. But we're having a different conversation today because in the code diesel that you said is coming, uh, Tony Moore and all of that, and then a room academy that he mentioned, right? You know, they are being given opportunity now. He's highlighting that all of them now, you know, to bring them into the culture. Now, let me be very clear and let me destroy distinction between the role. The Nigerian Tennis Federation role is encompassing. So, if it's looking for Abdullahi to come up with uh, his little uh, stuff, it's just a piece of it. Indico Diesel organizing a clinic is just organizing a clinic 
to raise awareness of the of tennis. You know, you know. So, so if uh, a room is having an academy, right, and they're helping the little kids and all of that stuff, it's just a little zero point one percent of what the Nigerian Tennis Federation, you know, ought to be doing based on the template of the ITF. Now, what I'm hoping to hear is that now that the president is now, you know, I mean, I, I like what I'm hearing, is trying to bring everybody together, right? I think the first thing is, you know, to have a meeting, a Zoom meeting with all of these people that he just mentioned. And then let's see how each of them can contribute to helping him, you know. And then, then to me, that transparency and accountability and all of that, now the Nigerian, well, people like me that have so I have a lot of network and a lot of uh, uh, contacts. Then I can now project, you know, that look, there is a new repositioning, rebranding of Nigerian tennis by bringing this people up. Again, we must clearly define the role of each person. We cannot be fighting the president. I mean, I fought the president, you know, all my life. And, you know, at this point, you want me to be fighting the president or fighting the system? Right, you know, so for me, Sadiq Abdullah, he's not going to do that now because I don't need the tennis federation okay. to do anything for oh, me, oh, right? Oh. You know, so oh, it, so okay. so for me now is to 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 work with the president in order to you know again I know my role, yeah, I okay. know I know theory, oh. I know practice, and then the business of tennis or sports development can be achieved only if we can package what we just talked about and then present it and market it to Nigeria and the rest of the world. Okay. As much as we come. Okay, Prof. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, Presido, uh, we have come to, we've come to, we've run out of time, actually. Uh, okay. So we've okay. come to the end. If you have just the final thing to say, very quickly, 30 seconds, uh, and then we can... Oh. Two areas that I'm looking out to desperately get funding from is uh, the Lotto Fund, the Lotto Fund in Nigeria. Of course, those 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 are those that those are that's an organization that should be able to support sport development. And then, of course, CSR from very big uh, government para starters, because CSR is meant to support anything around um, whatever you're doing. I mean. I expect customs with whatever they get and they have a budget for CSR, leave sports because uh, it's part of uh, what those funds should go for. Okay, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, fantastic, uh, Mr. President. And, you know, on my part, I think that the government should think more a bit, a bit more about sports because October 1st that is coming is, uh, you know, likely because our young people are not productively engaged and sports can do a lot of that for for the government it's also a great distraction that leaders in for, you know across different civilizations have used to put people in check all right um it's been fantastic having both of you on the program mr president i thank you uh, professor um sadiq Ab sadiq abubakar abdullahi I thank you also. Yeah, for, cool now. <laughs> yes, I thank you also for joining us again. Of course, we're going to engage more in the future, but until that time, this is me over for Izaga saying, "Be productive, be good, and stay safe." Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.